So you're thinking of playing Days Gone, but like me, you're a trophy hunter, and you just want to get a bit of a heads up of what you're in for, right? Of course you are. That's why you clicked on this video. That's why you're here. Well, let me start by putting you into a really good mood. The Platinum it's already yours. Days Gone gives almost no challenge when it comes to giving over the sweet piece of bling. But there will be a few snags along the way, and that's why in this video I'm going to go through the six most challenging slash worst trophies that Days Gone has got to offer. But first, a disclaimer. To be able to do this, I'm obviously going to have to spoil small parts of the game from time to time. I'll try and skirt around the details, but I got to do what I got to do. What I'm really saying is take this as your spoiler warning. While this isn't a review, it wouldn't hurt just to quickly run through what the game is about again. So that if you're thinking of playing it, you get a glimpse into what Days Gone is about. So it's a post-apocalyptic sort of horror game set in Oregon. You'll be playing as Deacon St. John who's on a bit of a mission to find his wife who he seems to have misplaced. He's a bad boy biker and he has his brother who isn't his brother or could be his brother we never really find out along the way. With, well he's with him anyway trying to find out what happened to, the, to, to his bay. He also wants to find out why Nero are knocking about. They're like the feds of the game or maybe the CDC or CIA. I don't know some three letter acronym. Well four I guess. It's your typical open world salvage, craft and survive game. The only difference is that you have a motorbike to get yourself around a bit quicker. And speaking of the motorbike, we're going to go in hot with possibly the worst, and I mean the absolute worst trophy in this game. Burnout Apocalypse. Don't let this little sneaky bitch deceive you. All you have to do is use nitro and drift at the same time on your bike for at least 5 seconds. That's easy enough, right? Upgrade your bike to the max, nitro and such and get off you go, on your way. Nah mate, getting the bike into a spin is one of the hardest things I did in the game and I took on all of the hordes at night because I'm an idiot. Two problems I had with this one, numero uno, I just couldn't find enough space to be able to do this. There are guides online that tell you where to go and how to do it, but how they did it and the places they did it, I'll, I'll never know. And problem number two, it's a bloody zombie game. All the open spaces are just rammed full of smooth brain skin drippers. They're all over the place. I couldn't get two seconds of peace, whether it was day or night. Just look, look at this. This is me being a complete mong on a bike. Eventually, for some reason, as you can see, I just sort of went for it in the middle of nowhere and got a decent spin on. Because you see, that's the tactic. Get into the smallest spin you can. So it's obvious this video isn't going to be in any particular real order. We've gone through the worst to start, so you know, look at the look. It's the idea of the video isn't to trash the game or put you off playing it. Days Gone is fantastic. It is honest, but if a game never makes mistakes, then it will never innovate. So let's look at the mistake that is you've got red on you. You've got red on you. Collect 541 items from corpses. That's not really a problem, is it? Well, yes and no. It's easy if you know that you need to do this. Items can only be taken from human corpses, which is alright because there are plenty of them, so it shouldn't be too much of a problem. Still, it can be if a specific item is full in your inventory. For example, kerosene and, and the corpse only gives you that particular item. Then hey presto, no items for you. I looted every enemy I killed, human of course, and it took me the whole story and some of the post game before I got this trophy to pop. There is a guardian angel with this one though. Uh, suppose you complete a side mission completely, like the ambush camps or whatever. Then you can reset them and hey presto, again you'll have a whole new army of humans that you can horrifically slaughter with your makeshift chainsaw baseball bats and then stick your greasy little hands in their pockets for that sweet, sweet loot. Like I said before, I'm happy I read the trophy list before I began with this game, otherwise I could imagine this being a massive grind. Also, don't forget to craft everything you can when you can, you gotta free up that inventory space man. Speaking of grind fests, let's talk about this little doozy called Lend Me Your Ear. This is a literal grind fest. So in Days Gone, for some reason that I don't think's ever really explained to you, the camps dotted around the maps like to take the ears of the fallen undead. They're traded in for respect and currency, not that they're really worth it. But most of the time, when you kill a freaker, as they're known, you'll automatically collect its ear. 
So it is really as simple as that until you realize that you need to collect the utterly arbitrary number of 989 of them. The only tip I can give for this one is do the hordes. It'll be over in no time, but if like me, you're a bit intimidated by the massive amount of zombies in the hordes, then it's gonna take a little bit of a long time as you'll only sort of be picking up three or four per encounter. That is if you go the wussy way, like I did. I never said this is a video about hard trophies, well I kind of did when I said it was challenging, but Days Gone really is easy, this is about as hard as it gets. I want to talk more about those camps, as I need to segue into the next section, uh, there's five of them throughout the whole game, and like I said, they're really creepy when it comes to dismembered body parts. That seems to be a universal thing though, so that when the world ends, all that will be left are the people with ear fetishes. Each camp needs 25,000 trust points to become allied with, and that leads us into best friends forever for life. Disclaimer, I'm stupid and apparently I didn't record the trophy, but I did get the one before, which is best friends forever without the for life thing. It's essentially the same thing, just with one encampment. With this one, however, you need to do three out of the five camps in the game. There are certain upgrades and weapons locked behind trusts spread across the map, so it is worth doing. The problem comes when you've done everything you can for a camp and you're still a few thousand short, so off you go killing them zombies and collecting the mushrooms for the kitchen. Please take my advice. Diamond Lake, Iron Mike's and Copeland's Camp. This is your holy trinity. It probably doesn't make too much sense to you if you've not played the game yet, but this is as much as I can say without giving too many spoilers. Clearing up goals in the open world will also help. Burning infestation zones, removing ambush camps, you get the drift. Just again, be prepared to get your grind on for this one, potentially. Okay, so do you like collectibles? Well, so do I. So let's have a little chat about that. This one is the Broken Roadshow. It's another sort of grindy trophy that the eagle-eyed of you might get naturally by just keeping an eye out in your environment. I, on the other hand, am blind as a bat. I wear the thickest glasses known to man that cost me way too much to thin so I could just blend in with society. And I sit about six inches from the screen. How do I know it's six inches? <coughs> well, yeah, use your imagination. So jokes and rambling aside, we have to collect 75% of 240 collectibles available. That's 180 of them in case you've not done the maths. And they range from character bios, herbs laying around and with crafting recipes. So you will get a lot of them just by playing. I do have to confess that when I had finished the game, I had to go back and get around 30 or 40 of them. Like I said, blind as a bat. This isn't a terrible one though, all things considered. Just watch out and be vigilant. I guess check everywhere, and I mean everywhere, before you move on. Oh, and on that note, I don't know if these are collectibles or just something that's stuck there for padding. There's cans or cairns left around the game. And in the next trophy, we're going to get Rebellious. Go Kick Rocks has us find and kick down 12 cairns left by the Anarchists. They're just another faction in the game, not crucial for now. I don't know if there's more than 12 or not, but full disclosure, I found maybe three of these naturally, which is 25% thinking about it, so maybe I'm not too bad at this game. <laughs> hey, maybe I'm getting good at this game. This is another one though where maybe, just maybe, if you're playing and paying enough attention, you might be able to get it yourself. I, on the other hand, did not, so I had to rely on the generosity of YouTube and a shout out to PowerPix. That channel has saved me multiple times. Anyway, find them and kick them down. This is on the list because there's just there, it's just there for the sake of it. It doesn't add to the game, it's never mentioned in the game. They have no purpose and it's just pure filler to extend the playtime and that is utterly the wrong way to do it. Don't you think? Never mind all that for now, we have a bigger problem to solve. We're going to war, kind of. Nope, you're absolutely correct. This is a knife. To unlock this silver bad boy, all you have to do is kill a breaker, reacher, or rager with a knife. Now there's a caveat to this one. All you have to do is make the killing blow with the knife. There are a few pseudo boss fights that have a health bar that will help you to know when to switch to the knife, but this isn't always the case. Out there in the wild, there are no health bars. You can eventually unlock a skill that allows you to sneak kill them, which uses the knife. I don't know if that works as this isn't how I personally got the trophy, but it is something I guess. These things are dotted around the map. If you're all only going to do a knife fight with them all the way through, then you better be prepared for a battle and a half. 
This and Burnout Apocalypse, in my opinion, are the most challenging trophies in Days Gone. The rest, well, that's just a grind fest which doesn't bother me personally. I like to grind. Hell, I'm level 99 runecrafting on RuneScape and I know how to do the grind. So like I said earlier, this video isn't here to bash Days Gone. It's the best game I've played in a long time and has a refreshing take on the done-to-death zombie media. The story is fantastic, the gameplay is excellent for the most part, and you will have a great time playing this. And remember, this is just my mere opinion. You might completely disagree, and if you do, leave it in the comments, let me know your take on Days Gone and its trophies. All that's left for me to do is thank you so much for watching this video and getting this far. If you haven't already and this is your kind of thing, then why not subscribe? I really want to upload more and my resolution for 2021 is to get onto the YouTube grind a little bit more. Leave a like if you enjoyed the video, dislike if you think it was the worst thing you ever saw. Either way, don't leave without making your mark and I will see you in the next one.